Sergeant! Yes. Welcome one and all, especially if you're new here. Today we are looking at why atheists get so angry. What's the angriest that you've ever been? Was it another person that pushed you over the edge? Was it rudeness? Was it something like road rage? Or was it a situation? Some mindless rule or badly designed product? I once bought a pair of kitchen scissors that was packaged so badly it needed a pair of scissors to open it. That made me really quite angry. The point is that we all, even the Dalai Lama, I imagine on occasion, gets a little bit hot under the collar. So this isn't about the act of being angry. We all do that. It's about what made you angry in the first place. With that in mind, let's get into it. So just like you can't clump religious people together, every person with a religious belief has got a unique faith. So you can't clump together atheists for their beliefs. Now there are atheists who've never had a religion, like me. There are atheists who've had to escape from religion. There are atheists who simply want to keep their atheism to themselves. And then there's those that want to explore and discuss it, like me. There are atheists who feel that religion is a dangerous and negative force on society like me. And then there are those who really just want to sort of live and let live. All of these things, along with the personal life experiences that people carry with them, will make different atheists feel, to some extent, more or less angry. Anger normally stems from common themes like not feeling heard or understood, perhaps a lack of power or influence over a situation, or just being treated unfairly. Now, as you're going to see, many of these types of themes apply to atheists, especially when communicating with theists. Frustration and not being heard. If you've spent time talking with a person with a religious belief, you may have noticed something interesting. I've spent time in churches and mosques and synagogues, and I've spoken to a really wide variety of people from differing religious faiths. When directly presenting evidence that theists may be wrong in their beliefs, I've noticed one clear similarity in nearly every single discussion that I've had with followers of the Abrahamic religions. I remember attending an Alpha course once, which is a UK religious course that's aimed at helping people understand the basics of evangelistic Christian faith via a series of talks and discussions. At every meeting I went to, I listened and I focused on the points that they were making. And then when I was asked, I respectfully provided my rebuttals of their arguments. In every single case, with no exception, against some of the most scathing logic, reason and data that I could offer, the reaction was the same. Totally refused to admit that I might have a point. I was met with things like, yes, that's a challenging question, or hmm, that certainly does pose some interesting ideas. Never was I told, you know what, in light of that, I'm going to examine my own faith, or yes, that does make my belief look very unlikely to be true. Their faith was an unassailable rock. There was no possibility of them being rational or reasonable about the points that I was making. This feature of religion, that of an unyielding and unchanging belief, can really be maddening to come up against. I often compare that with my own positions. I can confidently say that there is no belief that I hold, none whatsoever, including my atheism, that I would not change if the evidence is presented to show that I am wrong. Not only that, but I love being wrong. It's a sign that I've understood something better than I had before. And so for that reason, being wrong for me is a signal that I've got further on. Now, if you're a theist and you're shaking your head right now, I want you to ask yourself this one question. What evidence could I bring you, anything at all, that would stop you from believing in your God? I bet there isn't anything, is there? No argument that I could make, no data that I could present that would make you change your mind. A feeling of powerlessness. If you're like me, then watching the Supreme Court overturn Roe versus Wade, you will have seen the truth in front of you with your very own eyes. The conservative religious right has spent the last 20 years stacking the court with religious zealots in official looking robes. They've snuck in through the back door and then they've waited for their moment. They're using lobbying pressure and helping unsavory presidents against the public will get into power. The result is that six of the nine justices are now right-leaning and allowing their pro-religion stance to overrule the upholding of the law. 
Now, this type of snake-in-the-grass behaviour is pretty typical of many religious bodies, and sometimes at an individual level too. Anything, no matter how underhand and morally ambiguous, is fair game for the glory of the Lord. Of course, many non-religious folks will act badly too, for money or for power, but often those with no religious affiliation try to play by the rules for a fair society for all, not just for the members of their chosen religious cult, because they have no agenda to push. Now, I'm not even American, but I feel a simmering anger about this situation. If you feel powerlessness and angry about that, you're not alone. Many have expressed anger over this decision. In the end, I hope that the naked power grab is enough to start to convince the fence-sitters that religion needs to be removed as far as is possible from all areas of modern life. The anger here, for me at least, is easy to understand, but if you're still not convinced, try this thought experiment. So you get home and your partner tells you that you're not allowed to leave the house again. When you ask why, they say, because the green cat on the driveway. It's told me that no one is allowed to go outside. You say that you can't see the green cat, to which they reply, well, then you're not looking hard enough. But it spoke to me and it told me that nobody is allowed to leave this house. So you concede. OK, look, maybe we don't share this belief in the green cat. Uh, and it's OK if you don't want to leave the house, but I need to go out. No, they shout. The cat said no one can leave the house. You'd be pretty angry by now, right? Do you understand why atheists get really angry about religious people imposing their views on others? Being told you're going to hell. Now, it's unlikely that you've never crossed paths, even at a remote, with some brand of religious theist who thought that you were going to hell. The simple act of not believing their brand of faith is normally enough to guarantee a free ride to the fiery doom. Even if you believe in a different god and not their god, you're still going to hell. Many atheists laugh this off. Threatening somebody with something that they don't believe in isn't really a very effective tactic. But things are different when they take issue with who you are. If you were born LGBT, or need an abortion, or like heavy metal music, or yoga, or even just wear the wrong clothes, you may be shouted at by some branch of some faith. Depending on their particular brand of cult, that anger might be more or less aggressive. But the feeling of being judged in a, is a singularly unpleasant one, and may very well lead to feelings of anger or sadness, and perhaps other negative emotions. Now, if some god is going to sentence you to an eternity of hell just for being true to yourself, then, well, I'd suggest that you're probably better off without it. Now, I had my own angry atheist phase. For me, it was the fact that they were so hardened in their belief. There was no flexibility in their doctrine. Why could they not see that what I said made perfect sense? Why would they refuse to enter into reasonable discourse with me? However, as I got older and read more, especially more religious texts, I saw that they were a product of conditioning, to some greater or lesser extent, like we all are. While some theists arrive later in life, often at a point of great personal stress, the vast majority of theists are indoctrinated by their parents or the environment they grew up in. I have to work very hard every day to overcome my own personal conditioning, so I know how hard it is to recognise and nullify it. In the end, anger is never a path to long-term happiness. Anger is a valid emotion and must be recognised, but it makes a poor life companion long-term. If you're an atheist and you're feeling angry, then having a support network, even if it's only online, uh, that will hear you and recognise you and see you can make things much easier. So I've posted some links below to places that you could find helpful. But what do you think? Are atheists just angry because we have no faith? Perhaps that you've seen some other reason why atheists are angry. I would love to see your thoughts in the comments. I read every single one of the comments and I value the contribution that you make to this discourse. Well, that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe and hit the bell and all of that jazz. It helps this channel grow and it makes sure that you don't miss the new content that we produce. So, until next time, stay calm, stay happy. Goodbye.